and he 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 sent me his his paper that was that was showing the uh, the blueprints and things, and there was this little logo right on the bottom of the page, and I looked at that logo and I just began to praise God. This is the the biggest construction company in Guatemala that's sowing into the ministry. Amen. We're blown away at what God can do. When we get down and we just begin to say, God, <laughs> you know, bring in the best architects, bring in the best engineers, bring in the best people. We, they took us in to, they said, we want you to see the, the hospital that we, that we built before you, know, you, you commit to us and you can see our work. And so they take us into the most beautiful hospital that we've ever seen in Guatemala or probably even North America. And we, we walk through the hospital and we begin to, to see all, all the, the structure and the designs and, and all the machines that they have. Of course, a very private hospital that, that only rich people could actually uh, afford to be able to, uh, the, the, the child care and the different things that they have in this hospital. And we're just blown away. And so here God is already working on hearts and working on people to be able to build the city of refuge. Amen. Amen. And so I, I just, again, I want to encourage you, dare to believe, dare to dream. Because God has got amazing things. Amen. You're seated in heavenly places. It's time to call out. Ephesians 2, chapter, or Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. It says, For good works, which God prepared, and it says beforehand, that we should walk in them. Amen? Amen. I remember going to Guatemala. I always love to share this story. This was 11 years ago. Uh, first, actually 12 years ago, was the first time I actually went on a uh, two-week missions trip to Guatemala, enjoyed it, my heart was touched, I knew I was supposed to go back, I knew that God had called me, and uh, so I decided that just a few months later I was going to go back, and this time I was going to go for four months, and uh, I was just excited about it, and um, I began to, uh, to receive from God, and, uh, and I was just excited about going, and uh, I tried to take a little bit of Spanish, and so I got just an introductory course, at the time, and uh, things went great for the first week. There was a group there. We were able to just serve the Lord. We were able to go out and do ministry and get all the hands-on stuff. And you got to remember, this is 11 years ago, and uh, so I was about 18 when I first went. <laughs> and uh, just kidding. Uh, but uh, when I first went, we, uh, um, yeah. When I first went, we were able to, uh, we, we began to, to serve, we began to do so, so much ministry, and then, and I was the only missionary, and uh, I was uh, one of the first missionaries that Faye Bibi actually had for an extended period of time. There was one before me, but she had left uh, just as I was coming, and um, at that time, uh, God began to work in my heart, and he began to speak to me, and, and this verse was so ingrained in my, in my spirit that uh, I, was, I was going through a difficult time. It was only just a couple of days, and, and reality struck. Nobody was around. Kim had been away that day. Uh, he was on some trip somewhere, um, and, and the only other person there that could actually speak English to me was uh, Luis, and, and he was away that day as well, and so it was just his family. And so here's this, this Guatemalan family and, uh, who could only speak Spanish, and I was having a hard time because the only thing I could say to them was buenos dias, buenos tardes, y buenos noches. And that was it. And uh, there wasn't, you know, it's, it's not a good conversation. You just say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, all day long. And so I was, I was getting depressed. And I was beginning to really feel bad. Uh, people had come and they tried to encourage me and to, to continue. But I was really, it was really weighing on me. And I remember I got into my room and I began to cry. I began to put uh, my plans before the Lord and say, God, I'm going to go back home. Uh, this, is, this is done. This is over. Uh, at least I can tell everybody else that I tried. You know, how much pride in that? You know, at least I can say I tried and you didn't. And, uh, and I'm going to pack my bags. I said, God, I can't speak Spanish. God, I don't know how to minister. And I just began to tell God all the things that I could not do and all the things, all my limits and all, all my limitations. 
and I was honestly, yeah, al already thinking about how I was going to get that ticket to fly back home. Only after being there two weeks, and I had committed to four months. And I remember I was, I was finally decided, well, maybe this would be a good time to pray. <laughs> and uh, it took me a while. But uh, I began to pray, and, I, and, and again, I just began to tell God all my limitations. And I began to tell God the reasons why I was going home, and that it, it really, there was no point for me being there. There was, there was nothing that I could do. And he simply just said to me, Ephesians 2.10 just gave me the verse and I knew what it was but there was this was what came alive it says for you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus says for good works which God prepared and it says beforehand that we should walk in amen, amen. God knew ahead of time that I couldn't speak Spanish God knew ahead of time that I wasn't used to ministering God knew ahead of time all the limitations that I was having in that moment and he still called me are you catching this? Yes. Amen. Amen. This isn't just for me. <laughs> God knows all the limitations that he, that you have, and he, calls, he still calls you. God knows all, all the things that you're going through, and he still calls you. God knows what you're facing at this moment, and he still calls you. God knows all, all the things that have happened in your life till now, and he knows what's going to happen in the future, and he still calls you. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. 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 <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm getting excited here. <laughs> Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1. It's okay if we go to a few verses today, right? Amen. Pastor Carl said it was okay if I went till about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, one's, no one's sure how to answer that. Sure, why not? <laughs> well, I want a lunching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't need lunch. <laughs> we... Uh, one time in Guatemala, I said that. I said, we're going we're gonna to go all night. And uh, how, many, how many would enjoy that? And the Guatemalans just, yeah. they were screaming. They were all excited. And we began to preach the word. And uh, God began to move. And uh, actually, Adam was with me uh, at the yeah. time. And, and we just gave the word. And we spoke to the dry bones. And uh, the, the spirit of God was coming. And uh, all of a sudden, the, the spirit began to, uh, well, uh, an evil spirit began to manifest over one girl, and uh, so I began to pray for her, set her free. We're allowed to talk about this, right? And, uh, <laughs> and then, and then uh, somewhere else, another girl began to manifest, and, and we had to cast a spirit out of her, and it was actually, so much was happening that we actually had to leave Adam and say, Adam, you've got you've to help me out here, and I'm going to go pray for another, you start uh, praying over here. And so here we were, uh, casting out demons and praying for people, prophesying over people. And uh, all of a sudden, I looked at my watch, uh, and it was 11.30. And uh, I, was, I was already tired. And uh, all of a sudden, the, the pastor brought up his whole family, and he wanted me to pray for his family and the leadership of the church. And uh, all of a sudden, I looked up, and the whole church was gone. And uh, he hadn't even taken up an offering. <laughs> for for himself for for the church. So uh, it, the the next night I asked him again if they, if we wanted to go all night and, and nobody. nobody <laughs> <laughs> but I won't go till three. Don't worry. Um, yeah, Jeremiah chapter one, verse four. It says, "And the word of God came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you." It says, I, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Amen? Before I was formed in the womb, I knew you. When you were ordained, before you were born, to be a prophet to the nations. God is a calling for you since the day you were in the womb of your mother. You have a plan and a purpose. It doesn't matter how you came into this world. It doesn't matter if your parents said you were an accident. It doesn't matter if you, uh, if it was even as bad as, as being a rape victim. God had a plan and a purpose for you on this earth. God had called you for a time such as this. God has brought you to, to be here at this time, to hear this word and to receive this destiny, to receive this purpose. Because Jeremiah, he had come. And he thought he was too young. He thought he wasn't able to do anything. But God said, I've called you from the womb. I've given you a plan. I've given you a purpose. 
And God is doing the same thing in this hour, in this day. He's saying, I've called you. I've called you since the day you were born. I've been calling you since that time. And I've called you to be a prophet. I've called you to be an evangelist. I've called you to be an apostle. I've called you to be a pastor. I've called you to be a teacher. And he's raising you up so that you understand that it was not for any other reason but just God ordained. It's what God wanted. It wasn't what your parents wanted or didn't want. It was completely God ordained. God called you. God called you for this time. God called you to something great. God called you to a, a purpose and a destiny. Amen. Amen. And there's people struggling with that. There's people that at, at, at times are not sure. At times we, we go through a hard time. We, we, we see the difficulties. We see the circumstances. But we forgot that we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We forgot that we, we are in a new level. We've got a new perspective. And that Jesus is living on the inside of us. And that we can do all things through him in Christ Jesus. We can receive the destiny that God has given to us. And it's time that we shake it off, shake off all discouragement, shake off all depression, shake off everything that, that's coming against you and say, God, I receive it. I receive this call. I, re I, I pick up this mantle that you've given to me. I'm going to run with it, Lord. Lord, the vision, it seems too big, but in you, all things are possible. I'm going to, I'm going to go out. I'm going to take this vision with me, and I'm going to run with it. I'm not going to just put it on the shelf. I'm not just going to leave it for a few more years. God, I'm going to go out and do it because you've called me to it. You've declared it since before I was born that this was going to happen. I remember the discouragement that was coming before we, we even had the land for City of Refuge. I remember it, there was so much uh, happening, so much going on, and I began to, to cry out to God when all of a sudden the, the revelation of the Scripture uh, began to come to my come to, to my heart, and I say, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, you have built city of refuge in heaven, so I just declare that that vision that you placed in my heart, Lord God, will be built here on the earth. You know exactly how much land I need. You know exactly uh, where the streets need to be. You know everything about how the city of refuge need to be built. So even if you have to talk to the owner and he begins to make other designs, he begins to do other things because he started putting roads in that I didn't know about. And so, you just, Lord, I just thank you that you are bringing, you are already revealing to him what the city of refuge is going to look like. You're already, you're using him so that the other land, there's still more we want to buy. And that God is putting it in his heart. Thank you. And bringing it to pass. Because we were told to pray, God, your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. Yes. City of refuge in heaven, it's already built. We're just calling it down to earth. Amen. Amen. What's the vision in your heart? What has God called you to do that it, you just got to call it down? It's just time for you to, to say, God, this is already done on heaven. If God gave you the vision through him, it's already done. Yes. Amen. Yes. If God gave you a vision, it's already done. God lives in eternity. He lives in a, in a whole different realm than we do. He, li he lives in a, in, a, in a totally different space. We can't understand it. But through God, if He gave you the vision, the vision's already done. You can fulfill it. You can accomplish it. You need to realize who you are in Him. You need to realize that you're seated in heavenly places. That you have been called for good works. And that you're just going to walk in them because He's ordained them for you. And that you were called while you were being born in the womb of your mother. God began to call you. God began to form you. God began to prepare you and put all the talents and abilities that you needed to fulfill that vision. The resources are yours. <coughs> Praise God. 